Hey everybody, Fun Stampers Journey Coach Janice Wyden here. I am coach number 49 and in this video, I am gonna take you through how to create this beautiful card right here that features a super great uh, stamp set, Autumn Greetings. Love those leaves and that kind of whimsical kind of look to these um, images, ball images. And I am, like I said, featuring this stamp set and it is only available through our holiday mini right here that is expiring this Friday. So like this Friday, September 30th is the last day to be able to get any of the items on this, uh, in this catalog. So I thought, you know what? I did the little video on um, Robin Holiday. I say little, it was like an hour long video. Sorry, it just takes a while to show you those steps. This one right here. So if you haven't seen Robin Holiday, then go check out that video. It's a little over an hour long, but you know, you can fast forward through some sections and just get the, the main gist of it um, or slow down and get the, the full gist of it um, if you need to. Anyway, so, um, I'm showcasing these two stamp sets because, again, I want you to take advantage of these super great, um, super cute stamp sets that are only available through the end of the month. And I was just looking at these leaves. Again, I love these leaves. I know I showed you all those before. Anyway, but again today, sorry, going everywhere, Autumn Greetings is the stamp set that we are featuring. Um, it is available only through this Friday. Um, it is... $18.95 for a set of uh, nine stamps. So there you go. Super, 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 super cute. I think you're gonna love it. Okay, so once again, here's the card. And here is what I did to it. So again, pretty much the same layout. Did I already show you this? Y'all, my mind. Um, pretty much the same layout except for I added these little gold cutesy patootsies little thingies. And um, I think that's really the only thing different. Oh, I didn't add the little green dotty dotty things, but, oh, and I changed the color. So this leaf there, I think is kind of a purplish in the catalog, which you might not be able to tell on the screen, but you should be able to tell in your catalog. But I changed it up to Cranberry Bliss because I like those colors better. Anyway. Get ready, because I'm about to show you how to make this. Super easy, super fun. You got this, here we go. Okay, so here we go. So once again, we're making this gorgeous card. Beautiful, beautiful, I'll kind of show you the layers there. Kind of popped up a bit. There you go, ooh, look at that gold. Okay, so to start off with, um, we are gonna take a st uh, strip of oatmeal cookie Okay, and I've already pre uh, pre um, cut and pre scored everything uh, just for the sake of making a a quicker, shorter video. So again, this is a piece of four and a quarter by eight and a half that I scored in the middle and created a tent fold card base. Which, um, if you've watched my videos, you know that those are my favorites. You could, of course, use a regular fold. Um, meaning the, the fold that folds on the left side um, or turn it that way kind of a deal, but up to you. Anyway, so um, did that first. And what we're gonna do um, before um, we talk about the little pieces here is we're gonna create this background, okay? You may, I think you can pick that up in the camera. There are the faint, if you look real close, you'll see that there are uh, famed images of the leaves and the acorn and just different fall foliage as a background and that is what we're going to do first. Um, so um, I'm going to go ahead and get our stamps out. So our stamp set is Autumn Greetings like I mentioned and it is only available through the end of this week. So if you love it then you need to grab it soon. Um, so the images that we're using to create this background are this main leaf here, this big one, um, this little guy here, 
and the acorn, and I think the little berries as well, if I'm remembering correctly. Technically, you can use the ones that you want. You can incorporate all of these. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started with my biggest one first, and I am putting him on my block C, and he just about fits on block C. He kinda sticks out a little bit, but you know, I am just not a stickler for that. I mean, I just make sure to press down and we're good to go. Um, so we're gonna start off with using oatmeal cookie. Um, because this is an oatmeal cookie base, when we stamp with the same color, it's gonna create almost like a watermark look. And no particular way, just kind of stamp, you know, a little bit here and there. I don't even think I thought about it too much. I like to get my corners, maybe up here maybe here. Okay, so I did about five or so. So remember, we're just creating a background, so I'm not gonna be too concerned about um, placement of my stamps. I switched over to this guy. Y'all, is this a maple oak? I'm terrible. I don't know whatever shape that is. Whatever shape leaf that is next. And again, come and fill in some of these spaces here. Maybe here. And maybe I'll come in upside down this way. Okay. And let me switch over to little berries. I love these berries. And again, I just wanna fill in some of these empty spaces. And if you accidentally overlap with um, one of the, the images that you uh, stamped earlier, that's okay. It's the background, okay, it's the background. Um, okay, and then I'm going to switch over to our acorn. He has, actually is one of my favorite images um, in this set, is this little cutesy acorn. And he can fit here, and maybe I'll stick another one right there. Stick one here. I don't know, maybe I will give his little... <laughs> I'll go this way and make him come in the side there. Basically, wherever I see that he might fit or part of him might fit, I'll stick him in. And maybe I'll just overlap him a little bit with this section here. Okay, so now you can see I've got a nice fall foliage stamped background. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You remember, you're gonna cover a good portion of it. You just want it to be, um, just the background of it. And you may notice that one looks a little more, a little darker, it's because it's wet. So, okay, it'll it'll kind of fade just a tad to create that um, illusion of a background there. Okay, so now that we've created the background, at this point, you would then start stamping and cutting out your uh, different fall foliage. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit because we're gonna get just a little bit closer here. I'll bring in these other things. Um, so, looking at our original card, you'll notice I have two of these, uh, are these maple leaves? Y'all, I don't know, just, you know, whatever. Two of these shaped leaves using pumpkin spice, okay? So you're gonna stamp that, um, and I stamped using, I believe with these I stamped using the hazelnut blend. Okay, if you want it to stand out just a little bit more, you could use our dark roast. So that is your choice, but I did use um, hazelnut blend on those. And so I stamped those twice, okay, and then I cut them out, okay, literally fussy cut them um, using our little um, uh, pro shears that are amazing. These little detailed guys are wonderful and worth the investment. Um, they are not part of our 20% off promotion, but these guys are, and these guys will do the same type of job, okay? So 20% off until Friday. So we cut two of these leaves, stamped and then cut them. And then I stamped one of these little guy this little guy here. And on this one, I used dark roast just so that I could make sure to see the detail of the leaf a little bit more. So I've got one of those. And then I did three, oh, hold on, before I do the three, I did a little pine cone where, and he's missing. 
so he will just have to get stamped again. So I did a little pine cone on oatmeal cookie and I will go ahead and stamp him out, this little guy right here, just one of them. Um, again, dark roast will make the um, image pop a little bit more. We're going to stamp that on some scrap oatmeal cookie and then we will fussy cut him out. Okay, and I'm just for the sake of time, I'm going to just cut around him and put him off to the side for a minute in hopes that by the time I get to putting it together, I'll find the one I already cut out. So this little guy here. And then what I wanted to show you was how I created these little guys here, these berries. I thought it would be really fun to, um, I believe in the magazine or in the catalog, the sample had it cut out in, I think they had it cut out in green. Do you see that little berries? And that's cute too. And if you like that, man, go for it. But I just thought, wouldn't it be so fun to add a little bit of gold? Um, so that is what I did. Um, and so here up close, this beautiful berries. I just loved how it turned out with the little gold accents. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I did that. Um, some of you may be new to card making and stamping, and so I just always wanna be cognizant of um, who's watching my videos. I know some of you guys are experts and you know how you, I don't even say anything and you know already what I did. Um, but some of you are not, so I just wanna take a moment to show you how I did that, okay? Um, basically, I, um, used gold embossing powder to create that beautiful, uh, beautiful gold um, on top of that uh, image. And it's quite simple to do. So what you do is you need two things. You need our clear embossing powder, I say clear, our clear embossing ink. I say ink, pigment ink. It's just a clear ink. If you stamp on it, if you use a stamp, use it with a stamp, excuse me, and onto a piece of paper, it'll just look like a watermark, okay? But what we do is when we use this in combination with our embossing powder, which also comes in clear and silver. Um, there, let's see if I can pick that up. It's a little blurry. Basically, it just says uh, Journey Gold Embossing Powder, okay? Once you put those two together and you heat it up, it will turn into that. So let me go ahead and get that ready to show. So I'm gonna use the berries like I mentioned. So this little guy here, put him on my block, and I'm going to use the clear pigment ink, and I'm going to quote unquote ink it up just like I would with any other ink. And you can kind of see, I think you can see the kind of shimmer-ish, there it is. You can see that there is ink on there, it's just clear, okay? And if you ever feel it, it's, it's, a, it's kind of sticky-ish, um, and it's intended to be that way, so that I can pick up any powders or anything that you wanna um, uh, put on top of it. So I'm gonna stamp, and let's see if this will pick up. I can hold it just the right way. You can kind of see it right there, can't you? Um, right there. And so what we'll do next is now that I've stamped it with the clear pigment ink over a tray so that you don't lose your embossing powder, you are going to just pour a bit of that emboss embossing powder over your stamped image, just like that. And just cover it entirely and the powder is going to now stick to the ink. So tap it off. Sometimes I'll hit the back and then look, it's there. Now you might notice it's not brilliant, it's not shiny because we have not heat activated it yet. And so this right here is our, I'm going to zoom out and not in so much. This is our Journey Heat Gun, okay? Which I should tell you is included in our 20% off sale until the end of the month, so until this Friday. Normally $27.95, this puppy is now $22.36, so 20% off. And let's show you how it works. There's a little button right here. 
Hear that? That is basically the heat uh, coming out and the little motor running. Now be very careful with this. If you've never used a heat gun before, it gets very hot. You never wanna put your hand up here up close. Um, you can feel the heat and it gets really hot. So just be careful. We have a nice little plastic shield on ours. So it does kind of, um, it is an added safety feature, but just be careful when you use it. Um, and what I'm gonna do, and I'm just gonna show you and you can see the magic happen before your eyes, is you turn the heat gun on and you hold it over the embossing powder that you just stuck to that ink. And within a minute or so, maybe less, you will see it start turning gold. And I'm gonna see if I can do this and bear with me with the noise. Okay, do you see it turning? And that's it. Look at that. So if you ever wonder, well, how long do I hold it? As soon as you see it turn from a powder to kind of melted, uh, beautiful, liquidish gold, then that's it. You're done. At this point, um, you're ready to cut it out. And once you've fussy cut it, then you've got this little piece here that you can then add to your card. All right, so hopefully that was helpful for you if you've never used our clear pigment ink along with our any of our embossing powders. Again, it comes in gold, silver, and clear. Okay, now let's get back to our card. So we had our card base. Um, I told you about the three pieces here, the leaf, the little... Um, pine cone guy, which I still haven't found my loose pine cone, and that'll just have to be okay. Um, and the next thing is our, our circle. So we have this wonderful die, and actually we just, we have more than one. We have wonderful, wonderful, great, versatile die sets. And this particular die set um, is a great basic to have. Um, it's called Journey Circles and it has 10 dies in it. And if you can see, see so we've got that glare, um, five of these are cutting dies and five of these are basically an embossing or a puncturing, a puncturing die, I guess you can say. And I'm gonna hold this up close so you can see what I mean. So this large one here has a rim and that cuts the circle shape out. So it cut this circle shape out off the paper. But you'll notice that if you look up close, it has little kind of perforated little dots running along the edge. Well, that happened because of this little guy right here. It has raised little dots around the sides. And so it doesn't necessarily cut anything out. It punctures and it punctures in the shape of that circle. Um, and it creates this super cute, super fun little added detail for your dies, which is what we used here on this card. Okay, so our basic next step here, once you have run this through your die cutting machine with your two dies together, and it's real simple to do, uh, make sure your cut side is down and your perforated side is down just like this. And you can tape it down with some low tack tape if you want. Put it in the correct sandwich, run it through your machine, and then you'll get this beauty of a circle, all right? So, in order to move on with this little guy next, we're gonna take the Hello Autumn greetings there from our stamp set and we are going to stamp it using our hazelnut blend I believe is what I used last time and here's hello autumn and again I'm using block C there we go hello autumn I'm gonna take hazelnut blend you know what this time I'm gonna go ahead and do dark roast and see if that is a little bit more striking than the other. And I'm gonna go ahead and, you're just gonna kind of um, stamp it kind of top right-ish. Um, that should take care of it. Beautiful. So it's not too different as far as the color, but um, it you will notice this one is darker. Okay, so this hazelnut blend is kind of a chocolatey, warm milk chocolatey color. And then dark roast is kind of like a dark roast coffee color. So just, you know, something for you to know. 
Okay, so I've stapled it. I've got all my pieces together. Um, and so now we're going to assemble it. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to pop up this little guy um, onto our card base using our foam adhesive squares. And we're going to use our large foam adhesive squares. And if I can locate them, that would be fantastic. Okay, so I've located my large, I say large, I guess they're our medium foam squares. Um, and we're just gonna put a few on the back. And you know what I do? I do, I do kind of north, south, east, and west. Um, and I do four when I get a circle. I and mean, if I'm feeling extra like just wild and crazy, I'll put one right in the middle. But I don't feel like that's necessary for this one. So you're gonna go ahead and peel the backing off of these guys. And then you'll set it up on your card. And again, it's kind of towards the top-ish right. Um, again, doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so there he is. He's on there. He's uh, added my little squares and he has popped up a bit. And so at this point, um, I am ready to uh, do some splattering. Okay, so I actually added um, one change that I did that they didn't do was I added some gold silk. So this is like Richard's favorite thing to do is to splatter um, quote unquote paint on cards. And so this is our gold silk and you need to shake it up real good. You'll notice that the gold paint kind of pulls towards the bottom. So shake real, real good. Same with the dark roast, okay? And you can use this, um, I say can, you should use this over um, a piece of paper to kind of help control, um, I say control, keep your work surface fairly clean because it does splatter everywhere. It's hard to control. So I just wanted a little bit here, maybe a little bit on the corner, maybe a little bit over this side of my um, die. So what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of taking off a little bit because I just want a bit and I'm just gonna splatter just, just a little bit there. I don't know if you can catch that. There we go. And there is no specific technique to the splatter. If you want itty bitty ones, then um, kind of, if you don't want very much, then just make sure there's not a bunch on the brush. If you want more, then go straight into the bottle and directly to the paper and that will splatter more. So here are some of the splatter of the dark roast. And then now I want to do a little bit of the gold. And same kind of technique, just over the area that you want it to go. And again, it does sometimes have a mind of its own, so it's not always controllable. Okay, and I like that, the way that turned out. There you go. And again, always have a paper underneath because a lot of times it'll go places that you didn't realize it went. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in so that you can see a little bit better how I'm going to adhere these guys to my card. All right. So the first part that I started with is, is you always kind of work in layers when you're creating um, a floral bouquet of sorts. And so the first two sections are these two orange leaves here and here. And I, I could use the small foam squares for this little guy, um, but what I ended up using instead was hot glue because I just wanted, I wanted this to kind of be the base for everything else to be stuck to. Um, and I wanted it to make sure it didn't come off and be fairly stuck to the card. And, and I mean, who doesn't love hot glue? I do. Um, so take one side, put a little bit of glue, and you know what, you don't have to use hot glue, but I am a sucker for quick, strong adhesives. Um, and then just kind of line it up off to the top left. Top left, I don't know, bottom left, I guess that's better, more accurate. Same for this little guy, hot glue on the side. Sorry, off camera. And then this one is more off, kind of towards the bottom right and it is hanging off the circle a little bit, okay? 
Um, from there, we're going to adhere the, um, you know what, I think on mine, I did these little two pieces, but it technically doesn't matter. But we'll go ahead and do the red next, because the red goes right there in the center, um, kind of, it's not straight on so that it goes in front of the saying, but it's kind of off to the side. Um, and I did use hot glue for this as well, just because you just can't beat it. And it also does give you a little bit of dimension, which I love. And our pop dots do that too, but I just wanted it to dry quick and I'm looking for a pokey so that I can stick this down. There we go. That's another thing I love about hot glue is that you can kind of mold it and shape of your piece and then it keeps the shape that you want it to keep. Okay, and then I believe at that point I came around and I kind of positioned these off to the sides, kind of like this, sticking off to the side. And I did, again, use hot glue for that. At this one, for this one, you probably don't need hot glue. Um, you could probably use just a regular glue, but you know what, I had it already heated up. And so I said, why not? And so that one goes there. Now I did add a glue, I say a glue dot, a foam square underneath the leaf because I did want it to stay upright. You know, I use these scissors for everything. Sticks this little guy in here. Just so that it doesn't fall down and it kind of stays where I want it to stay. Because I don't want it flat, I kind of like it lifted. Let's see if you can see that better. There you go, now you can see it. I want it kind of lifted up a wee bit. And then same for this one. So I'm gonna put a little bit on the stem and then I'm gonna do a little glue dot and pop it up just like that. Don't you just love hot glue string? I'm kidding. All right, so that one goes there and then again with a um, pop dot, a foam square, right towards the back bottom so that this guy doesn't fall down like it did. So it has a little bit of shape there, right there. There we go. Okay, so I don't know if you can see, it's got a little bit of lift. Some of the leaves are kind of sticking out. And then really the very, very last little part here is this center piece that's gonna go here, right there. And then the little pine cone that was kind of um, missing. <laughs> I, I found it, and then I did another one. And I've got two, so I'm like, hey, why not? I'm just gonna go ahead and add two this time. And I'm gonna stick that right underneath there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put hot glue on both of these guys and stick them right down. Just right there. Cause I kinda like them right there. Okay, all right, so now, I'm ready to tie this little fun bow. Okay, and I'm trying to remember, did I? I did, okay. I think I went ahead and did this one first. Don't y'all like how professional I am? I think I did. <laughs> you know, we all learn something and sometimes we learn as we go. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and glue this one down, hot glue, and hot glue as well as a foam square because this one for sure I want to be lifted up. I want that to have volume and I want it to keep its volume. So I'm taking a large one under this one, putting it right underneath this so that it does not fall when I put that bow down. Okay, do you see that? So it's got some volume there. And I'm going to take the bow and I'm going to stick it right there in the center of my card. And actually, I'm going to move this little guy over a little bit. Oopsie. It's the beauty of hot glue. There we go. I kind of centered him. I wanted the stem to go off this way because I want the bow to be right here towards the center of these um, two little berry uh, deals. Okay, now for our bow, this cutie little patootie little bow right there. We use our Lemongrass Journey Thread, okay? It's wonderful. And um, 
it's kind of like a triple bow. I'm going to try to zoom out so it's not so much in your face. Um, it, it does have, let's see if I can zoom in here, bring this up to you. It has three loops, okay, but only two little pieces coming down. So let me show you how I did that. So to start off, I kind of just let loose a little bit of this um, thread. And I took my two fingers and holding the one end of it in my palm, I took the thread and I went around one, you know, I think I opened it up. Depending upon how big you want your loops to be, you might want to open your fingers or close them according to the size. So let's see here. I think I'm going to put this way. One, two, and three. Okay. And let's see here. At this point, I went ahead and I cut. So when I went around, I did one, two, three. Okay, and of course I have one end here, the loose end that I'm holding onto, and then this end here that is stuck to the spool of the thread. I'm gonna cut about a, I don't know, five inch or so piece here, right there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come around and I am going to basically tie a knot. Okay, so let's see if I can get this out of the way. I don't know if that's gonna be helpful or not. So coming around my fingers, I'm going to come over and I'm going to pull this under here. Okay, see what I did there? You can always pause it to see it. And before it goes all the way through, I'm going to kind of go over and now I'm going to pull it. Okay, and that's going to create the knot there, kind of like the middle part of my bow. All right. Um, at that point, if you wanted to tie one more knot, you could. This is going to be your second little um, loose guy. And what I did on mine, just to make sure that my bow was just ready to go, is I and it wasn't going to unravel on me, was I did one more knot with these two with these two little pieces that are hanging out. And you just tie it like you normally would tie a knot. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Just like that. And tie it real tight. Okay, and then your bow is ready. And then you can kind of fix your loops like how you would like them fixed um, and cut the excess off as needed. So I don't need all of that. So I'm going to cut maybe this much, okay? All right, so now that you have your bow, okay, this little guy, now you can glue him to your cart. So again, I'm going to take my hot glue. You don't really need hot glue, but you know, again, it was ready and good. So actually, I think I'm going to put it on the center of my bow first. And then I'm going to stick it right in the center of this little bunch of berries here. Hold that down. Pray you don't get burned. I'm just kidding. Ha ha ha. Um, and voila. We have Mr. Bow, cutie patootie card, love it. There you go. So what do you think? Do you like it? I love it. I think it's adorable. This is a, such a cute stamp set. Again, hello greetings, hello greetings, autumn greetings. Um, I'm kind of in love with these um, with these fun kind of whimsical leaf shapes and of course the berries and whatnot. And then of course, because I couldn't find my um, original one um, pine cone, I made two. And hey, why not make it your own? Be, be you know, use what you've got. Um, anyway, um, hopefully that was a nice, uh, fairly simple card you can make. Doesn't have too many technical skills. You can always substitute color. You don't have to do the gold embossing. You could just stamp and fussy cut and then assemble um, as you want. Um, 
And really, gosh, other than that, the background, uh, creating the background with the foliage was a great technique. If you've not done that before, it's really fun to be able to create your own uh, quote unquote background paper, so to speak. Um, and then of course our circle dies, which are fantastic, add a really fun element to the card. If you want this stamp set, if you love it like I love it, then you have about, what, four days, three, four days left to order. So um, get those orders in before Friday because after Friday, that catalog will no longer be available. Okay, as we are saying bye-bye to this one. Um, also, like I mentioned earlier, our basic supplies are still on sale through the end of September. So if you're looking to get um, heat and gun, 20% off. Um, those craft shears I mentioned were 20% off. I'm, I've done this a, a few other times, so you guys probably know our paper trimmer. Um, some of our punches are 20% off. Our acrylic blocks are 20% off. And a slew of other things. If you want that sheet, just let me know. I've emailed a few of you already. Um, just let me know and I'll send that to you, okay? All right, well, if you have any questions about this card that I made today, or any other products that I sell, just shoot me an email, comment below, and I'm happy to help with that. Um, if you are ready to order, then you can go to www.funstampersjourney.com forward slash Janice Whiting um, and click on the shop button there on my webpage and it'll take you to the shopping cart and you can just shop to your heart's content. Um, I will have a list of the items that you are used on this pro project um, so that you can just type in the item that you need when you're ready to order. And I have heard that there may be a couple of some difficulties with the ordering process. Just bear with us. Um, I think that they are having a high um, um, high demand, whatever, whenever a lot of people are shopping. And so maybe it's slowing down the system. So just be real patient, refresh. Um, I heard that our system plays better with Google Chrome than Internet Explorer, but so if one's not working, try the other. Sometimes they just, they're finicky. Um, thank you so much for your patience if you're having any issues with our websites. We are a fairly new company, so it's taken a little bit, you know, for us to kind of work out the kinks in our system. But with the amazing products that we have, um, I feel like it is worth waiting and kind of working through those kinks in our system. So. Anyway, I do thank you for your patience. And if you ever need any help with making an order, uh, let me know, give me a call, email me, and I will walk you through it um, or help you put that order in um, by doing it myself and we can work out that way too. So just let me know, okay? Other than that, I think that's all I have for you so far because our mini is expiring in um, the end of September, Hello Friday. We have a new mini coming in, so I'm excited to uh, show you guys that October. October 1st is when it becomes live, so, so stay tuned. Probably that first week or so is when I'll get that one out, okay? All right, thanks so much. I hope you have a great uh, day, and we'll see you later.